What is going on guys? So we are going to have to go ahead and accept something. After kind of the recent events that have been going on with uh, what looks like we are, you know, we went ahead and traded AJ Boye. We are probably, we're gonna be in the process of trading an Ikan Gagwe uh, based on the fact that he, no longer wants to be here and we plan on pl placing a franchise tag on him and just the tr g great trade value we can get from franchise and franchising and trading him and also just with the different rumors that we there might be more trades coming along the way with us potentially getting rid of uh Calais Campbell maybe I've heard like Nick Foles there's a few even I've heard Brandon Linder and Andrew Norwell they are in talks with a bunch of different teams about kind of stripping this roster down. And it's just a little bit ironic because we are going into a rebuilding mode after we didn't really build anything. I mean, we had one good season in 2017. Obviously, it's just a huge outlier season because it's like the only season since like, what, 2010? I don't even know. It's the only season under at least Dave Caldwell's tenure that we did not suffer double-digit losses. So we built something up, you know, after just spending money in free agency, and then we're tearing it back down again. And, you know, I didn't think we were going to be rebuilding just because, you know, we brought back Dave Caldwell and Doug Marone. And we, typically when you do that kind of stuff, it's like, okay, you guys have another year to prove it. We don't have Tom Coughlin in there, so you can't, you know, blame different things on him. And granted, he deserves, he really does deserve a lot of blame. The guy just came in and destroyed the culture. He, you know, ran off some of our good players. And it just seems like he built a really toxic environment. And being that we're Jacksonville, like Jacksonville, I mean, I love the city and everything, but we're not, it's not like a big glamorous city. You know, we're not like San Francisco. We're not like Chicago. Uh, we're not like these, you know, cities that are just so beautiful and there's so much to do in there. We are just a small town thing and it's like, you know, you combine not really much to do around the city. You combine million dollar athletes and you combine all that with a team with a with a crappy team with a crap culture. It's not a place that you want to be. And, you know, so there's a lot of damage control with that. Um, but at the same time, you know, Dave Caldwell, I mean, when you look back at his drafts, you know, it's almost like he either does really good or really bad. I mean, in 2013, uh, no one from that draft class was remotely good, and none of them were even in the NFL, with the exception of, I believe, Jonathan Cyprian is still around. And then 2014, the year after that, you know, he does somewhat decent. He gets guys like Al Robinson, Telman Smith was in there, like Aaron Colvin. So there were some good picks, but of course he misses on a quarterback with Blake Bortles. And, you know, like Marquise Lee, I would not say was necessarily a hit, even though they did give him a contract after. And just, you know, it, it, there's been some questionable, you know, draft classes. And um, also when you look at the free agent classes, it, the free agent classes have been especially bad, but, um, but at the end of the day, you know, they gave him a chance to come back and kind of prove himself, not under Tom Coughlin. And, um, but now, like, they're going to let they're gonna let him come in and they let him strip the roster down to nothing, let him build it up, spend a lot of money, and then now it looks like they're going to let him strip it down and build it up again. Because at this point, with the way our team is going to be set up, like, it, it's clear that we're not going to be able to I shouldn't say we're not going to be able to win a lot, but a lot of good things are going to have to go our way in order for us to win a lot. Now, when you look at us, we currently have, right now as it stands, we have six picks in the top four rounds. And I really think the top four rounds of the draft, I think those are the money, the money rounds of the draft. You know what I mean? I think those are the rounds where you can really, like, find starting potential. Then anywhere with the rounds five and after, you know, those are more shots in the dark. You try to get your sleepers, and sometimes they work out. I mean, for our team, we've had guys like, you know, Telman Smith. Telman Smith was a fifth rounder. Um, and, you you know, there's sometimes where you have guys that turn out to be, you know, really, really good. Obviously, Garner Minshew was a sixth round pick. So, you know, sometimes you can hit on those, but most of the time you don't. You know, most of the time those guys are, 
you know, might be on a team for a year, they might make a practice squad, but you know, they rarely really live out the whole four years. So, you know, that's really good having six picks in the top four rounds. And it, it looks like we're gonna have more coming, you know, after we trade off Vinick and Gokwe and um, potentially if we trade away like the Calais Campbell or, you know, some of our expensive linemen like Brandon Linder or Andrew Norwell, you know, we're gonna be trading away Vinick and Gokwe. I mean, I would expect Calais Campbell, I mean, why would, if I were Clayus Campbell, I'd want to be traded. Why do I want to stick around on this team? I mean, I'm, an, I'm not getting any younger. You know, he's still playing at a pretty high level, but, you know, that's probably, he's only going to be playing at a high level for a max of two more years. So, you know, he wants to win. I would think that he'd want to get traded to a contender. And, you know, if, if he wants that, you know, I'll, I'll give him that. If, if he wants to be traded and you know, go to a team where he could potentially win a Super Bowl, I would allow that because I don't think we're going anywhere in 2020. But, you know, I think the future is very bright for 2021. Like, I really do because when you look at the team right now, like, our 2019 draft class was actually pretty damn good. We got a double-digit sack guy in uh, and Josh Allen, the guy's a stud. The guy is the exact type of player that I now want in the first round. A guy that is productive and a guy that is humble. Humble, you know, after the whole Jalen Ramsey mess, I don't need a guy that needs to talk about how good he is and tell everybody he's the best at this. I want a guy that proves it on the field and, you know, he's a family guy, he's got kids, he's got a wife. A Josh Allen, I don't have to hear him in my ear, in my Bluetooth, <laughs> talking about how great he is, you know, prove it on the field and, and that's fine. And, you know, Josh Allen, I hope we can get another player of his caliber at, you know, whatever position we really need. Second round, Juwan Taylor, very good right tackle, best right tackle um, in the draft class. So then, you know, our third round picks, Josh Oliver and Quincy Williams, those are obviously way to sees. Um, and also you look in the sixth round, we got Gardner Minshew. Um, I mean, it was just, it was an impactful draft. It really was. And, you know, that draft class is gonna get older. And then this next draft class, man, obviously we have two first round picks. We might have three coming, man. If we can really hit, then, you know, have a year for these guys to come out there and develop and, you know, and then they can take that into their second year. Really in 2021, we could make a legit run. I mean, we really could. We, had, we would have the personnel to do it. But first things first, you got to hit on those draft picks. You know what I mean? Like. I mean, if you can, in the first round, if you can just hit on two of those guys, then, I mean, I, I'm, on my, I'm honestly already accounted that we're going to have three uh, first round draft picks, but man, like, if we have, say we have six picks in the top four rounds, hit on four of those guys and get a couple of solid contributors, and then, you know, also, like I said earlier, with Josh Oliver and, you know, Quincy Williams, you know, with those guys, like, it's still wait and see, those guys could develop in a pretty good, we really don't know what we have in Josh Oliver, I mean, the guy played at a very small school. He came in here and played for what, three or four games and he didn't really show much, but you know, he's, he didn't go through training camp, didn't go through preseason. There wasn't much time for him to really um, come into his own. So what I don't want to do though, is spend a bunch of money, you know, in this upcoming free agency. I, I don't want to go out there and throw a bunch of money to this guy, this guy. I might want to look into getting like one expensive guy like I want a tight end really bad I want like Austin Hooper I want Eric Ebron I want Hunter Henry just one of these guys I want to pay money for because I desperately want a tight end I, I've been wanting a tight end for so long I want to see what our offense looks like with a tight end and you know with this upcoming draft I mean we could go a bunch of different ways you know obviously I want to build the trenches because you know having good offensive and defensive line like Especially like, I mean, for example, if you have a good offensive line, you can just straight run the ball every play and be good. I mean, we saw the 49ers do that in the NFC Championship game. Jimmy Garoppolo threw the ball, what, eight or nine times because they had a solid run game. If you have a good run game, you can, you know, move the ball, run clock, and you're not turning the ball over. You're not putting the ball in harm's way. Um, and a good D-line, man, if you can stop the run and if you can get after the passer, you know, those are dangerous things. So build the trenches, get your quarterback position right, you know, I'm, I'm definitely down to like Garner Minshew quarterback for us in 2020. But what I'm not down to do is if they see a guy that um, 
that they really do think that this guy has all the traits that we think are going to be great, whether that be a Justin Herbert, um, whether that be a, a Love, or whether that be if Tua somehow falls to that position. You know, I would pull the trigger. You know, I don't want to be in a situation like we've been in so much in the past where, you know, oh, I think we're good at this position. Let's let him run it out. And then all of a sudden we see Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, or Lamar Jackson just fly by us. I'm not down to do that anymore. We have a lot of draft capital. You know, Andy Reid said that one of his scouts basically said that Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback we have ever seen. And they spent a they, they they moved up like ten spots in the first round, gave up a first round pick and went after there and got him. And they are reaping the benefits now. They have rings on their finger because of it. They're Super Bowl champions. You know what I mean? And you know, I'm not saying I don't doubt Gardner Minshew, but I'm just saying I don't want to say, oh, well, we have Gardner Minshew, so we can hold off on quarterback and let the next best thing go by. So, you know, we are going through a rebuild right now. I don't think we're going to be good in 2020. I'll be completely honest with you. We had the chance. I mean, we could be good. You know, we could be good for if a few different things happen. If Gardner Minshew really is the guy, and if he just improves dramatically in 2020, if we stay healthy and uh, just if our rookie draft class really contributes, you know what I mean? And just if, you know, coaching holds up, just all the different stuff. I mean, there's a lot of factors into it, but really those are the, like, the three main things. But I'm being assertive here. Um, I'm going to, I'm, obviously I'm going to stick around with this team, no matter if they're bad or good. And I think 2020 will be a year where we can really, you know, pin our ears back. We're going to have some salary cap open up you know i think at this point i would rather keep nick Foles on the team than just because we can you know cut him and not really lose much money after 2020 and you know i'd rather just keep him on the team not worry about you know giving up draft picks to move him and um yeah just ride with Gardner Minshew and just see what we can do man go with the board get best available player and Hopefully the future is bright. You know what I mean? I'm going to be rooting for it. So thank you guys all for watching the video. Stick through with me on this and we're going to be good. It's UCF Jaguar and we out.